Hey, this is Onesto, and today I'm showing you five of my favorite ways to use vocal synth from Isotope. Let's start off strong with talking about my favorite ways to use vocal synth, which is MIDI mode. Okay, I really love MIDI mode. Pretty much vocal synth uses MIDI to determine the voicing of the synth engine. So you'll get something like this. Lucky for us, it's really easy to make this happen. So get an audio track and place vocal synth on it. And then you wanna click this mode right here. Click this button and select MIDI mode. Now, if you're using a DAW like Logic, Ableton, or FL Studio, there'll be some routing instructions here to help you set it all up. I use a DAW called Bitwig Studio and Isotope still hasn't put routing instructions here. Uh, that's a little annoying, but it's really easy. All I have to do is check out the link below for some clear instructions on how to route MIDI inside of Bitwig. Now, once you have it all set up, you can grab a MIDI clip or use your MIDI keyboard to control the voicing of the audio. It's so addictive to do so. Uh, let me demo it. If you're unsure of what to play with MIDI, then a safe bet is to play the chord progression of your track. I like to play the chord progression of the song, but I try to spice it up a little bit by adding some extra notes like seconds and sustained chords, or I try to even do like a hybrid of like a chord progression and melody line. And hey, if you don't have vocal synth already and you wanna try it out for free, click my affiliate link down below for a free 10 day trial. It's such a fun plugin, so please give it a shot. Okay, this next tip is something I recently discovered in mini mode when I was making my vocal synth for beginners video. And that tip is using poly or mono mode. You'll notice that when you hit the voicing tab in here, these voice sliders are all deactivated. And that's because the MIDI is determining the voicing. And below that you have these two modes, poly and uh, mono. Poly is what we have already explored. You get to make these big luscious vocalized chords with it. But when you switch to mono, it reminds me of that Vocaloid plugin that's out there. Take a listen. You hear how I can really manipulate the sound while keeping things sound really vocal synthy. Yeah, I feel like you can build a whole track around what you can do inside a mono mode. Using sidechain mode can be really cool. I'm honestly still getting the hang of it and sometimes it feels a little bit like an experiment still, but maybe that's the whole point. In MIDI mode, the voicing for vocal synth was determined by MIDI. In sidechain mode, the voicing is determined by a sidechain signal. So you'll be able to get something like this with it. Feel so wrapped up and confused. I don't know what more to do to explain my love for you. Can you feel so the first thing you need to do is select the mode button here again. And instead of MIDI or auto, we're gonna select sidechain. Once again, you'll probably see some routing instructions here for your DAW, but Bitwig users, uh, we don't get that privilege yet. Once again, if you wanna know how to route audio for sidechain mode inside of Bitwig, just click the link down below. Now I like to use an audio track in the same key and similar BPM as a vocal, and then place it on the audio track and see what it does. I have an example right here of a distorted electric guitar. Here's how it sounds on its own. Yeah, just some distorted guitar, and then when you make it the sidechain source for the vocal synth. Yeah, pretty cool stuff there. And I find that samples I have a clear uh, melodic tones, they have the most success. Um, let's try another one out. Here's this one, like really cool uh, loop with a lot of brass in it sounds. Yeah, a lot of soul in there, and here's how it sounds as a sidechain input. Yeah, it's a really interesting way to get some cool sounds out of vocal swim. Now this next tip is gonna help you get a cleaner end result, and that's by making use of the gate knob. A lot of times, especially in raw vocals, you can get these little breaths in there. And, and these breaths can be a really good thing because they're natural, they can help a vocal sound more intimate and real. But those breaths can end up running through vocal synth and they can sound a little distracting. So all these yellow pieces here are breaths and we're gonna hear them uh, go through vocal synth like this. Hear that? Yeah, so sometimes that can get real distracting. Um, I think sometimes, in some cases, you'll, you'll want those breaths in there, but I find that when you eliminate them, the end result sounds so much cleaner. So to do that, we're gonna crank up this gate knob as high as we need to go until we can no longer hear those breaths. So let's uh, 
give it a shot. Keep going. We heard it there. More. Or. Oh, there we go. See? Yeah, isn't that so much better? And I don't really like this preset inside of Vocal Synth, but it, it really, uh, just by cleaning it up, I like this result so much more. So we'll go before. What did we like fun? Yeah, it's just kind of like these little pieces that we don't really need. And then after. What did we like cool, and just like that, you can get rid of that breath without messing with the dry signal. And if you're enjoying this video, please consider supporting the channel by giving this video a like. Likes just really help the channel a whole lot, so thanks a lot. Okay, this last tip is how to get the most out of auto mode. It's funny because if you don't understand this about auto mode, then you may not like it at all. The secret to auto mode are the pitch and voicing tabs. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna switch this preset over to a preset called uh, Four Barbers, right there. I think this preset does a really good job at showing uh, you what auto mode can do. Let's make sure our gate is up here and play it. What did we So let me show you what's going on here. In the pitch section, you wanna make sure that a few settings here are correct. The first is this register section. You wanna make sure that the register of your vocal track matches the register selected here. Mid is a great place to start, but if things don't sound quite right, then you wanna select either high or low. Adjust it that way, but mid is usually where you wanna where you wanna be. Then make sure that you input the key of your vocal in here. You can keep it at chromatic, it still works, but I think you get the most versatility and control when you input the key of your vocal track. So my vocal sample is an F sharp minor, so that's what I'll select right here. And once you have that set up, go over to the voicing tab. And here's where you're telling vocal synth what kind of voicing to apply. In the four barbers preset, we have three voicings. We have one at a third, sixth, and negative fifth. Together, these voicings create that really rich and lush harmony. I'm gonna turn down all these sliders so we can kind of build and see how they layer upon one another. So here it is without any of, the vo of these voicings here. What did we fade? Like the same. Repeat. What did we fade? Now I'll bring in the third. The and then the sixth. Repeat someday. And then I get a fifth. So by keeping these things in mind, you should be getting a lot more out of auto mode. All right, those are five of my favorite ways to use vocal synth from Isotope. Remember that if you wanna try a free 10 day trial, just click the link down below. And if you're enjoying what you're learning, please like and subscribe. It'll help other music makers find this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Later.